Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So as you can see, it's in the evening time now. It's about, what is it, 6.45 p.m. and the sun's going down. I'm at my house and I'm just in the little kid's pool here, a little 10 foot above ground pool. And I'm gonna test the Gladius submersible little drone here, submarine drone, whatever you wanna call it, uh, in the pool. So I wanted to test it kind of in the evening to show you guys how the lights look in the pool and how it kind of looks line of sight, just zooming around. You may have seen, um, I already did a kind of an ocean, short, quick little ocean, shallow water test. And this thing did really good, but I just wanted to kind of explain the controls. So we're just gonna do a short little demo. I'm gonna throw the buoy in the water. This is the, the wireless buoy here that floats in the water. And, uh, and then tomorrow, actually, I'm going to the ocean and I'm gonna do some, some range testing and stuff. So watch out for that video. If you guys missed the unbox, I also did the unbox. And like I said, that shallow water ocean test. And so far, this thing has done awesome. So hang in there. We're gonna get started with a little bit of a, kind of a darkness test in the water and see how this thing looks with the lights on. Let's get started. I'm gonna throw this thing in the water and that's gonna float. I do have the freshwater buoyancy module on it because this is fresh water. I'll be switching it out in my next ocean test. And just taking off, whoops, don't wanna boot that up yet. I'm just gonna take off the, um, the buoy here and the way you do that is you just kinda slide it off the stand and then just throw this thing in the water uh, this thing has a, um, a little setting in the application where you can tell it to on the next boot up calibrate its depth. So if you're having like depth problems, I was about a half a meter um, showing wrong in my ocean test. So I went ahead and just clicked the on next boot option to boot up and set it at um, level, you know what I mean? Altitude level for the ocean water. So I'm gonna test that and let's see what happens. So booting up, you just click on this little uh, button on the top of the buoy and you can see that those lights are awesome man so it's going to boot up and it's going to have the lights on lights are going to go off and then you're going to hear those quadcopter sounds and the cool thing about this is i've got both things in my pocket as far as the controls go so i've got the controller it comes with and my phone and we want to get started with connection so i have bluetooth on First thing I want to do is connect to the Gladius. So I'm going to open up my Wi-Fi settings and get off my home network. And then click on to the Gladius. You may have seen this in my unbox test, so if you have, sorry about that. Now I'm going to turn on the, this is Android, so I'm switching this over to the right to Android. And it should auto link to my phone. There we go, we have an amber solid light, and that's linked. We should be ready to go. So all you need to do is slide your phone in here, just like that. Of course, I explained you can also put a tablet in with one of those like Mavic um, tablet holders, just slide in like this. But we're just gonna be using the phone today. So this is connected to Bluetooth to the phone and the phone is bound wirelessly to that buoy floating around there. And now all we need to do is open up um, the If Drive, If Dive application. You can download from the Android or Apple Store. And this is gonna boot up. It's gonna say connecting. And let's see what we get. There we go. So we have everything's on. We're seeing the FPV on the, I almost wanna call it a quadcopter, but <laughs> I'm just gonna say Gladius submersible. And there we go. So we're, we're basically ready to drive the thing. And first thing we wanna do is turn on the lights because, oh, the depth did work. You see how it says zero feet here on the app? So that works perfectly. And I'll show you how I did that in just a sec. But anyway, let's turn on the lights and see how this thing looks. So I'm clicking the right top trigger. Okay, so the lights are really precise where if you just keep pressing the button, it's gonna turn full on 100% bright. Anyway, the, brights are, the lights are now 100% bright. We have 97% battery power. And you can see our compass over there on the top right. And an update that they just made on this app is you can change from Celsius to Fahrenheit now. I have a Fahrenheit reading on my temperature, 79.1 degrees in the water. And they let you change to feet instead of meters on the depth. So that's awesome. Really loving that. 
Anyway, so the motors are locked, we can see here, and we can't do anything until we unlock the motors, and the way you do that is just press start. So when it's in stabilized mode and you press start, it's gonna try to keep itself level. So I'm gonna press start here, and you can see the motors are just gonna keep spinning until it keeps itself level. That's basically just like a quadcopter, stabilized mode. And if you press the select button here on the remote control, I'm not sure how easy it is for you guys to see, but if I press select here on the left, it turns off that self-stabilization so you have a nice, quiet, smooth um, operation. Okay, and now I can just move the, uh, the Gladius around. And I have it right now, I have it at 30% power, so it's really a slow, you know, and gradual power. I'm pushing both sticks forward, and it's gonna try to dive. So there it goes. Once you get it under the water, it gets super smooth. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of a 4K test here. You can see some bubbles are coming out. It's basically filling the cavity. You know, it's, it's basically flooding the cavity just like a submarine would do to its ballast or whatever. And um, so now I can control it. And look how cool the lights look on the bottom of the pool. So I'm turning the head by just like a quadcopter, pressing left and right on the left stick. And then on the right stick, I'm pressing um, forward for like pitch down, back for pitch up, and left and right roll. So real simple. And then just pushing um, throttle up to make it go forward. And that's it. So super easy. You can see the buoys floating there. And that thing's gonna unravel as you go out. And you know, this thing's got uh, supposedly 100 meters range wireless, and then 100 meters on the tethered cable from the buoy as it unravels. So it's gonna be really interesting tomorrow when I do this, a little depth test. But anyway, let's just scoot around. I'm gonna show you the different speeds on here. So I was just pushing forward, and this is 30% power. It's gonna be very slow. And it has a natural tendency to want to kind of um, just gradually float up in this shallow. Maybe if I went deeper, it would actually have a better neutral density. But I'm gonna go ahead and start recording the 4K for you guys and just see what it looks like in the pool. Not gonna be much to see, but let's just go for it. And I'll have that popping up on the screen now so you can see the 4K in like a little box. So again, 30% power, just gonna cruise it on the bottom. It's really slow to yaw in 30% power. Here's uh, here's full speed. It's got a couple toys in there. There's full speed and 30% power. And it reverses really fast. So if you have to stop, if you're gonna hit a piece of coral or something, pretty darn cool. But you can see how slow this yaw rate is just looking at the craft. So if you wanna speed that up, um, I don't think I covered this in my unboxing, but you go into settings here. I'm clicking on that little three dot in the top corner. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm clicking on settings and it was at 30%. You can go all the way to 100 so and every, everywhere in between. Um, and it's, it's a completely proportional ramp. So, you know, it's, it's at like 1% inter intervals. So you have the total customization there. I'm just gonna go all the way up to 100 and you're gonna see a super difference in, um, in speed. Anyway, I wanted to show you some of the menu options here and the differences between my last video and this one are, you can see how you can change temperature unit and length unit. So um, you can change that from Celsius to feet and meters to feet, so that's a great. And then they also included this little update. So you can, when you're connected to your wireless at your house, uh, actually, when you're connected like this, disconnect. You see how it actually just unarmed the drone because I wasn't having any input. So I guess that's possibly a good thing or not. But anyway, um, you would be connected to your Gladius here at your house and get into the menu like this and then disconnect and connect to your home Wi-Fi and then check for update and it'll update or not if it needs to. And then you have an accelerometer calibration here and device imp information, we'll click on that real quick. And all, we're sh all it's showing us are um, voltages between the two batteries on the sides of the craft, current battery draw, both at 170 milliamp hour. And then it shows you battery percentage remaining for both batteries, because there's one on each side, 95 and 94. So pretty cool. 
so far, and this is a brand new app, so I'm gonna go back out of here. And it looks like the motors did lock after no input. So I wanna go ahead and turn the lights back on. So I'm holding it down to turn the lights on. Okay, and then we're gonna rearm by pressing the start here on the controller. So we're armed, but we're in manual. So it's very smooth, you're not gonna hear it trying to self-level. And look at the difference in speed here. So now we can just like totally zoom around, watch how fast it goes. It's pretty impressive how fast this thing goes. Full throttle forward, woo! Just nailed the skimmer there. But you can see how it's um, pretty peppy when you have it in full throttle of uh, 100%. And of course, if you turn hard, this thing's gonna be like a fin in the water. So you have to compensate with some roll. And out of all the other ones I've seen um, on the market right now, the ones that are released, a lot of them don't have these two motors on top. You can see in the water here how this one has two motors. So it allows you to actually do a roll. So I'm full roll to the left and look at that. I can stabilize rolling underwater if I want to. And that's a feature that a lot of the other submarines don't have, and that's kind of the reason I backed and bought this one, is because I thought it was one of the most capable. And we'll see how it is in that test tomorrow, but... Anyway, this is it. I'll have the 4K up on the screen. Not, again, not gonna have much to see at all in here, but there's the buoy on the 4K camera. It does have pretty good colors in this clear fresh water, but they really need to do some kind of work on some filters for seawater, some blue water filters, attachments. I have ordered just some um, regular camera filters and I'm gonna try to fix it on the front for much better uh, color correction under the ocean water. But really simple and easy. Let's go underwater here, whoops. Let me just get it down. Once you get it down, you don't have any kind of lag on the, uh... oh, we're getting wrapped around the buoy, there we go. So I'm gonna get it down, I'm gonna switch into stabilize by pressing select. So let's try that, let's roll it to the left. And I'm gonna press select right now. And look at that, it just immediately tried to level itself out. And it's gonna fight to stay level, just like a quadcopter. Okay. What I have noticed in stabilize mode is it's not quite, quite as precision and precise as manual mode. Um, the proportion of the controls. So it'll keep you level, but your controls are gonna be a little more jittery. Watch when I move into um, manual mode, how much more precise I can make it. Of course, you can just you know sit there and coast at level if you're trying to shoot something. So I'm gonna press, uh, I'm gonna go forward a little bit here. Shoop. Brakes. And I'm gonna press select. And we just took off all of the um, stabilization and now we can just really just kind of like float around and have really precise movements if we want to let's go over here and check out this um, this little play toy submarine my kids were playing with there it is so let's see how stable I can make it here okay I'll have that up on the screen for you guys in the video but you know pretty pretty cool pretty good it's trying to float up just a little bit just because it's so shallow here. And the buoyancy is slightly off for how shallow it is. There it is. So there's the green sub. I was kind of light of sight there, but now I'm strictly FPV and I'm trying to keep that little sub in view. Let's try to get a little bit close to it. I do have the skimmer running and there's a little bit of current in this pool right now. So it might kind of mim mimic a really, a really um, calm lake or ocean if the ocean is like super calm you'll still have a little bit of current so i'm just kind of orbiting this little sub and trying to keep it in the lights here so pretty neat you know of course in stabilize you see how we're getting that little bit of roll rock so uh or that's in manual sorry so let's try to put it in stabilize now and see what happens i'm just going to try to get it in view pressing select now we're in stabilize. But you see in stabilize, we can't get that nice and smooth downward angle. If we even just push a little bit, 
it wants to just keep going down. So I did mention to the Gladius team, Chasing Innovation, that maybe if they put a semi-stabilize where it would stabilize roll, but it would um, not stabilize pitch, that would be kind of neat because then you could just really slowly pitch and keep your your horizon level because as it, as it is, it's a little tough to have smooth pitching actions and stabilize. Cool, so just zooming around, I'm gonna go back into um, manual mode. And again, let me show you that where full pitch to the full roll to the right, and that's as far as it'll go. See, it stops itself from flipping over in stabilize. Let me try both sides here. Whoops! Of course, when you come out of the water, you're not going to have any thrust. Let's get back down here. Okay. And let's try to um, let's try to do a pitch up. So pitching up. And that's it, it'll just stop you from pitching any more back. Kind of hard to see because of the lights, but let me dim those lights a little bit. There we go. We can look at the sky if we wanted in the water. Lights are dimming off. Let's turn the lights back on. So it won't let you um, pitch any farther up than that in stabilized mode. And then let's pitch it down. Let me turn the lights back on full blast. This is such a cool feature for the lights, I love it. So lights are on 100%. Now I'm gonna push it all the way down and see how far down it pitches. So just before it reaches a right angle, it stops in stabilized mode. So pretty cool for like a beginner pilot, driver, whatever you wanna call it. Now let's look, look at that again in um, manual mode. So I'm gonna go out of stab stabilized mode. So I'm pressing select and now we're in manual so it's just free floating it's not going to try to keep level let's do a full pitch down and just hold it and watch what happens let me get up a little bit Whoop! it's trying to suck into the ground sorry okay full pitch down now let's see if it'll flip yep so you can do flips and rolls with this let's flip over back forward cool so you can basically fly it like an acro quadcopter somewhat it's gonna, like I said, try to kinda get back to its level just because of the buoyancy of the whole thing. The buoyancy is leveled um, from side to side, so it'll eventually level itself out, which is actually good if you ask me, manual mode. But super cool, man, you can do, let's try a, we did a back flip. Let's try to do a front flip now. So we wanna back up, have no forward momentum, and full pitch down and keep it, keep it back. Look at that, so we're just doing a full somersault. You can see how it's gonna try to fight back to level a little bit. Whoa. <laughs> cool, but that's manual mode for you. It's a little discombobulating when you get upside down, that's for sure. One time I was able to flip it upside down and just it would float upside down like that. Let's see if I can do that again. If I can get my directions right. Okay. Completely forward. Uh, let's see if it'll float upside down. So yeah, if you wanted to, you could float upside down. Let's see if it gradually writes itself. Yep. So it does gradually write itself. Cool. That's basically it, guys, for the Gladius. Um, I'm gonna stop. Well, actually, the 4K did stop. As it is now, it's pretty darn amazing. Um, occasionally, I do kind of have a dropout in connection from the Wi-Fi buoy here at my house, but I didn't have a dropout when I did my my brief ocean shallow water test, and I'm attributing that to possibly interference or the Wi-Fi around my house area. So um, I'm thinking it's going to be a lot better when it's in the open area and there's no Wi-Fi. But we'll see how that all works. That's what. That's what testing it's all about, and we'll see if anything leaks, if there's any water infiltration in the buoy or in the drone here, in the Gladius submersible. And in the, uh, the ocean test too, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have my son either in his dive gear or on a surfboard, and he's gonna paddle out as long as it's calm. But we're gonna see just how far this thing can go and still have FPV and control. If I lose control and I can't reconnect, I'll go ahead and have him just pick up the buoy and come back.
in range. So that'll be a really good thorough range test for this thing. That's what's so interesting about this is it's got this wireless, semi-wireless capability. And it can go 100 meters down as well. So that's gonna be fun. We'll try to do a depth test at the same time when we're going far out. Here's the buoy, check it out. So this thing supposedly is completely waterproof and semis, I mean, I'm not sure how deep it's gonna go without leaking. It's definitely not as um, waterproof, as deep as the uh, the Gladius, but uh, it can, you know, it's gonna be floating around in the water. So technically it should be pretty waterproof on the surface. And I really like that light for like nighttime. You can really see things going on there if you need to spot it, that's pretty cool. I didn't go through the camera settings, so let me do that real quick. So of course we can go from, we're in 4K, 30 frames per second, or we can go to pictures. I'm just pressing on this little picture icon. And this was another thing, the Gladius, when it first came, uh, the pictures were locked and I couldn't do picture or video. So that's why I kind of recorded my screen on the first ocean test. But now they fixed it. They just did a little online um, verification update for me and I'm able to use my pictures and videos. You can see how it it's cropping in the picture like a four by three type of style. So I'm not sure if you can change that, but then you just press that and you take pictures. I'll have these pictures popping up on the screen. Actually, let me get a better picture of the buoy. There it is. Let's take a picture. You can see the colors and the clarity and stuff. And then back to the video. And when you're in the video, you can go ahead and you can change your, your settings. So I'm gonna click on this little setting icon. And here we go. So. We have, we can adjust our bitrate manually, which is interesting. You click on this drop down. you can actually do 4K or 1080 only. I don't see any 720 option as of right now. We can manually adjust our bitrate, and that's pretty interesting. It's gonna use up more storage, of course. There's 64 gigs on the drone that you remove the files wirelessly so they can keep it waterproof. There's no plug-in connection, so it's gonna take a little longer to take off your files, of course. Um, and here's where we can change our frames per second. So 4K is only gonna have 30, you can see that popping up. And if we go to 1080, let's try that. We can go down to 60, 30, 60, or 120. So you can actually do, do a little bit of slow-mo, slow it down and have some smooth slow-mo if you wanted to in 1080. So those are all the camera options. So I'm gonna go back to 4K, cause I'm gonna try to shoot 4K video when we're, um, when we're test sitting in, in the ocean tomorrow. And then of course, if you go into this little gallery icon, that's gonna bring you into the gallery. So there's the pictures I took. There they go, they're coming in. Two videos, and there's all the pictures. So from here, if you check this out, I'm gonna click on one. You can download them straight to your device. So we'll try that real quick. So you press the download and then download here. And there we go. So you can see that Oh, I was downloading some other ones and I disconnected it. But there's the one downloading right now. And you can see that it's going at about, oh, what is it going at? It's going at like 150 megabit per second. So, you know, it's gonna take a long time to download 4K videos, but you know, that just prevents it from any water infiltration. There's our videos down there. One was one minute, one was 47 seconds. Oh yeah, you can also take pictures and video with this right bottom trigger and then change between picture and video with the left. I didn't do that. I was just doing it on the on the um, software buttons. That's pretty much it. All these other buttons don't do anything. The D-pad or the um, A, B, X, Y buttons don't do anything. These up here are just like a back button. So pretty interesting. And you can see how the water is looking quite green now. <laughs> so this thing does definitely need some color correction filters for for water, blue water or green water. So hopefully they make something because it does have that ring on the front. You can take off that little rubber bumper and it does have a little grip ring, you know? But so far so good. Um, also, so don't miss the ocean range test and the full review. I'm gonna do it with the commentary just like this, what I'm doing now. Um, while we test range and get out there in the deep and all that stuff. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a rescue for my Mavic in a freshwater waterfall pool 
out towards Hana. I'm on Maui and I lost my Mavic in the pool. You may have seen a couple of videos I put up on that. And it's still, for a couple of months, it's been at the bottom of this 30 foot pool. I couldn't get to it because it's super murky. And I didn't have, I don't have like diving gear, like scuba gear or anything. And I was having some trouble. I went, I tried looking for it twice the day it, I lost it. And I went back and it was just, it had rained and it was super muddy. And I haven't gone back since. So I'm gonna take the Gladius to the pool and we're gonna rescue that thing with, uh, I'm gonna try to put a little thing on the bottom where the buoyancy module is. I'm gonna try to screw on a little arm with a hook or something. And as long as I hook the Mavic, I can either try to pull it out with the thrusters of the Gladius or just pull on this um, tether because the tether can hold supposedly, you know, up to 100 or 200 pounds or something. I'm not sure what exactly the strength is going into the Gladius. You don't want to pull on that too hard, but I'd imagine it can pull the Mavic up as long as it's not stuck on like a huge log or rock under there. Cool. So anyway, guys, uh, there it is. That is the Gladius. There he is, say hi. I hope you enjoyed that little pool test and just seeing how it all works. It's pretty cool little piece of equipment and I'm gonna do a lot more for it. So stay tuned for those other videos. If you're subscribed, thank you very much. If you're not, subscribe and you'll see much more for one of the world's first underwater submersible consumer affordable drones. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.